today we're going to talk about synergistic muscles and antagonist muscles. We're going to need some dumbbells, kettlebell, and my bench. Ugh. All right, let's see here. All right, so I know. Look at this. Same, same tank top hair, everything. Do a double, double video thing tonight. Actually, I might do three in the same getup. So, yeah, filming. But anyway, um, today we're gonna talk about synergistic and antagonist muscles. Last time we talked about prime movers, um, <clears throat> and how they produce force. So the synergistic muscle and antagonist muscles are muscles that synergistically are ones that help the prime movers with the movement and then you have the antagonist muscles which are muscles that are acting against that movement. <clears throat> Let me get my notes here. Oh yeah, let me check that. I think I showed you guys already but I do have a notebook with my notes. Um, I'm a little scatterbrained, I have a lot of ADHD so I gotta keep myself in check with my notebook. But anyway, let's get back to it. So synergistic and dominant and uh, antagonist muscles. So synergistic muscles are um, how do I explain this? So for your bench press, your, your prime mover muscle or your agonist muscle, the main muscle is going to be lifting with is going to be your chest. So synergistically, muscles that are going to be helping with that are muscles that are going to help push. So your chest is a push muscle. Um, the muscles that are going to help with that bench press with that also push muscles are going to be your triceps, shoulders, <clears throat> and that's about it. Those are the two. Those are the other two centers that are going to help you bench press. So let's demonstrate. <clears throat> when you do a bench press, right? You're going to press press up. That's going to be your chest, a lot of your chest. But your triceps are in your arm, so you got your tricep back here, right there, right? So that's going to help stabilize the dumbbell. The shoulders, which is right there are going to help with stability and flexion as well. So, you're going to drop dumbbell up like this. So, while you're doing this, your triceps and your shoulders are working with your chest to get that lift. <sighs> Reversely, and antagonistically, you're going to have muscles that are working against that. Um, uh, the muscles that are acting against your... Um, bench press are going to be your biceps and your back because your biceps and your back are pull muscles so they want to keep the weight close to you right so while you're pushing away your biceps your biceps want to keep the weight close to you so when you're stretching out your tricep you're also stretching out your bicep your bicep wants to stay like this the bicep is made for this motion for pulling triceps are made for pushing that's why most of your tricep exercises are push. Your single overhead tricep dumbbell extension, or even your tricep extension machine are for pushing away from you. Or even your tricep pull downs are for pulling away from you. Now, <clears throat> your biceps are for pull or for, for are for pulling towards you. Your back is for pulling towards you. When you row, you're pulling away towards you. When you do a bicep dumbbell curl bar preacher anything, you're pulling towards you. When you do a row you're pulling the weight towards you, right? <laughs> so, that's safe to say that when you're pushing away from you, your pull muscles are acting against your body to add resistance because it wants to, it doesn't want to, wasn't want to pull, it wants to, it doesn't want to push, it wants to pull. Sorry, am I, am I doing, am I saying this right? So when you're pushing muscles away, when you're pushing weight away with your chest and your triceps and your shoulders, your biceps want to pull and are acting against that power. So, here's the trick. All right. <clears throat> so when you're bench pressing, people think that um, the muscle was made from the eccentric movement. So the eccentric movement is the movement that that is the the movement for the muscle group, right? So, <clears throat> the eccentric movement for a bench press would be the pull up. This would be the push out, right? The concentric movement would be when you drop it down. See, as you're pushing the weight away, it's when your tricep and your chest are the strongest. 
Now the trick is to control that weight as it comes back down. Uh, for anything uh, muscle use wise, the muscle building and tearing and the strength building and tearing is going to come from that that uh, negative, right? Not the positive. The positive is good for uh, cardio, aerobic exercise because you you want to push it out fast. But that muscle build is going to come from that slow, controlled, nice concentric movement. So. Anytime you're doing like uh, adversely, if you're doing like a, like a dumbbell curl, right? Do a dumbbell curl. <clears throat> this is your positive. Your biceps engaged, shoulders engaged, your lats are engaged, your back's engaged. It's pulling the bicep, pulling the dumbbell towards you. Now, the easy thing to do is let that drop like that. That's not building you muscle. That's just releasing tension on your bicep. The trick is to do slow time under tension. So you're getting that bicep curl, nice and easy, breathing nice and easy. So your bicep wants to pull this, your tricep does not, because when you pull your bicep up, just like when you, just like when you straighten your tricep out and your bicep wants to curl back into you, when you pull your bicep up, you're straightening, your, you're shortening, or you're lengthening the tricep, right? So it doesn't want, it doesn't want to do this. Your bicep wants to, to, to lengthen, your tricep wants to straighten out like this. So your, bi your tricep is adversely acting against your bicep by not wanting the curl. So when your triceps try and straighten your arm out, that's when you have to do that time under tension because that's going to be what builds that muscle fiber up in your biceps. It's going to break it down and make it stronger. So adversely with the synergistic muscles helping out the big muscles. So you got your chest press, you're benching out, you're benching out, you're benching out, you're doing real good, and then your chest fatigues. What happens when your chest fatigues? Uh, you start to feel more in your arms. So what's happening there? What's happening there is synergistic dominance. Uh, simply speaking, your triceps are going to take over more workload from your chest. As your chest gets more tired, your arms do more work. You can cause injury or uh, actually lasting um, damage to your arm, to your shoulders. I have a lot of tendinitis, bursitis on my shoulders just from lifting heavy. <clears throat> so just synergistic dominance is the smaller, the smaller synergistic muscles, the smaller helping muscles. So let's consider the synergistic muscles, let's say helping muscles because they help your chest with the lift. So your smaller muscles are take over for the big muscles. So your tricep and your shoulder, which are helping your chest, are actually doing more work in your chest after a certain point, which is why it's important not to overtrain. It's important to know your limits, and it's important to know how your muscles are reacting to each other. So just remember that chest and triceps, back and biceps, and the shoulders adversely work pretty much everything, because they can do anything, right? They, they can circulate this way for your tricep extension, they can circulate this way for your bicep extension, and then you got your tricep, you got your chest press, then you have your rows. So your shoulders do a lot, uh, for just for articulations purposes, to get your arms in the right place. Now, if you don't watch how much you're lifting and how you're lifting, then you can really mess up um, technique, and then that technique's gonna lead to injury. Adversely, when you're doing a leg lift, we talked a lot about upper body here, when you're doing a leg lift, <clears throat> pull my shorts up here, I know, nice pacey white leg. When you're doing a leg extension, your quad is doing a lot of work. Your hamstring is going to be that antagonist muscle, right? So, when you're flexing, your, your quad's kicking it up, but your hamstring wants it to come back down. <clears throat> so, the body is that, uh, is always at a um, very precarious fine line between helping and going against itself. They're not necessarily good or bad, but depending on the lift, they are uh, exerting a positive and negative force on your body. <clears throat> because you need to have your body, your body needs to be going against itself in order for it to grow and um, get stronger. Uh, you can be comfortable in the weight room, and the muscles definitely don't let you be like that. The muscles are definitely uh, always, you know, acting against each other, and uh, they're always trying to assert dominance over each other. The, the body has to be at a good balance, you know. You, if you don't have a good balance and you look all disproportionate, then that's what it means you have the guys with the, the big chest and the small arms, 
or there's there's big like no neck traps but they have like no chest and then you have the guys who have like really big upper body but no legs yeah you have to have a good uh, symbiotic relationship between your antagonist muscles your synergistic muscles and your and your prime mover muscles so a lot of people are working on arms or chest you know those mirror muscles or trying to look good for the ladies or trying to put the flex on Instagram like look at me at the gym yeah, big muscle headed freak <sighs> but you have to have a, a sort of balance with your workouts you can't work out one thing more than the other you want to work out each muscle group twice a week it's it's a very fine line of training versus knowing what to do versus knowing what your body wants to do and then you gotta you gotta take into account goals knowing how to react to your body and it's just knowing that this motion has to be quick and explosive like your 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 positive motion should be quick and explosive and then your your negative needs to be a nice slowed controlled movement because that's where you're going to grow all your muscles. But we'll talk about that more in another video. I just wanted to get you uh, a hand on what synergistic and, da and uh, antagonist muscles are versus your prime movers. Your agonist muscles are the muscles working for the lift. And your antagonist muscles are the muscles working against that lift. Synergistic muscles are the ones that are helping your agonist muscles with that lift. Here, here, here we go. Analogy. You got your hero muscles, you got your psychic muscles, and you have your nemesis muscles. Just bear with me, guys. So you hear him. So your chest is gonna be Batman, right? It's doing all the work, but it needs Robin to back him up because the Joker and his henchmen, which are your back and your biceps, are working against you. So that's a good way to think about it: is you have your heroes and your sidekicks, and you have your nemesis muscles. Um, I'm a nerd. I know. I'm sorry, uh, but. It sounds complicated, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help make it, make it seem easier. And it's hard to describe what, to, what I'm supposed to be doing on camera, but I don't have someone here to like film and uh, videotape. But um, it's just knowing what muscles are working for the lift and what muscles are working against the lift. And you gotta know which muscles that are gonna work with the lift to help that you're not overworking them during that lift so that you're not gonna be injuring yourself or causing strains or sprains or any sort of pain that you don't want to go through. Your synergism are your sidekicks and your an antagonists are obviously your nemesis. So you need those to help with the hero muscles to get a good, solid, even workout in. <clears throat> so hopefully it wasn't too confusing for you guys. I tried to really simplify it with the hero thing. I feel like that's a good analogy. That's all I got for you guys today. Subscribe if you're new. Really help me out I'm trying to get this going so I can be fitness full time instead of part time. Support me. Help me out. You know, um, I don't plug myself very often, but I do have my own business. It's called Velocity Performance. I am certified. I do have certification through NASM. You know, if uh, you're looking for a personal trainer or looking for some sessions, I do four to eight week sessions. $20 a workout, three to four workouts a week, depending on what you can do. I can guarantee results as long as you listen to me and follow what I'm trying to tell you. I have a system in place that you can eat junk food and eat and snack sparingly, and you can still lose a pound and a half to two pounds a week. Uh, hit me up at uh, vcityperform at gmail.com. <coughs> I'll drop the link here. Uh, I'll also put the description down below. And you can follow me on my social media accounts if you want to. I'm kind of doing that, I guess. Um, Facebook.com forward slash VCD Perform and Instagram at VCD Perform as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Peace out. God bless. Have a good day.